Welcome viewers, you're watching the Mortgage Busters Show. We're all about helping you pay your mortgage down to a big fat zero. Like I tried last week, I think I was trying to get that. Is that the, <laughs> the right symbol for yeah, yeah, yeah. the super thing? <laughs> a big fat zero. So you can go to the bank and say, excuse me, Mr. Bank Teller or Miss Bank Teller or whatever, could you please give me the title to my property because now I own it outright. It's mine, thank you very much. Take it home, put it in a safe or a vault or somewhere where you know it'll be nice and safe. My name's Greg. I'm Adrian. And we're here, we bring the professionals on to help us get to that place. So, who have we got today? We've got Shane Watson here. Mr. Shane Watson. Been around for a very long time in the real estate Thank game. You. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Greg. Very good. Adrian. So, you've got some experience in yes, this industry? Yes, I've had industry, 20, 20, 20 years uh, in, the, in the industry of property, investment and finance as well. Yep. Um, I'm a licensed uh, real estate agent, um, also property investment consultant. So I've had a, a lot of experience with properties and investment properties and developments and uh, and uh, talking to consumers about buying investment properties and how to handle their investment properties. Fantastic. Now, when it, when it comes to particularly investment properties, people know of the term negative gearing. But I would say that maybe one in 10 would really fully understand what that means. Mm -hmm. Can you enlighten our viewing audience? Yes, it, it, is, very, it is very confusing. Um, it's, it's regularly in the media, negative gearing. Um, it's, it's not, a, to me, it's a very positive thing. Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> but it's yes. just that it's called negative gearing. That's right. Um, it's, it's, it's all about um, uh, the, the federal government trying to encourage people to be landlords, to buy investment properties, to then rent out to the public. And it's the cornerstone of the federal government's housing policy. Um, they want to encourage people, ordinary consumers, um, to buy investment properties to then rent out to the public. So to keep increasing that. At the moment, we have shortages in many, many areas. So uh, the shortage of stock. Shortage of stock. Yes, rental. Um, so the, the 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 benefits that the the government provide through the tax department tend to be tax savings. Mm -hmm. So that's where negative gearing comes in. Uh, they're providing incentives to people to buy an investment property by giving you tax refunds, tax savings. And that's what the negative gearing is. It's all a matter of tax deductions when you own an investment property. Um, so things like the, the interest on a loan to buy an investment property, that's a tax deduction. Um, but other things uh, are probably the, the, the most important for investors is uh, what they call the depreciation type deductions. Um, uh, there uh, on the on the building structure and on the on the uh, fittings and fixtures in the in the building, and um, uh, the government is quite generous there in trying to encourage people to buy new properties. So the depreciation deductions are much much lower on established properties. Uh, the government is is trying to encourage uh, landlords to buy brand new properties, you know, particularly build brand new properties. Mm -hmm. So the, in, in other words. The reason in the first place for giving us these deductions is to solve the housing problem, I would imagine. That's right. So, because yes. as you mentioned, there is a shortage of homes. That's right. And I guess you're pointing towards new property to, again, stimulate the building industry and keep that... Yes, that has a... Is, is that the main th that's reason? A, that's a secondary advantage, yes, right. uh, from the federal government. They, they see that if they encourage people to, to buy brand new properties, mm -hmm. um, it will provide more stock for rentals, particularly rentals. Uh, but also will stimulate the, the housing construction industry as well. So it has two two big benefits for the economy and for the for the general public. Um, with with uh, actual consumers themselves, there often has been in the past um, some uh, uh, negative comments in the media about negative the term negative gearing and mm. and and whether it somehow is um, adversely affecting uh, some consumer groups. Um, it tends to be uh, from people that uh, believe that somehow in, uh, giving tax deductions to investors will cause more competition to buy properties, right, uh, and make it um, harder for first home buyers, particularly to get into the market. Oh, of course. But that, yeah. that's not the case, though. Right. Um, you know, the, I can understand yeah, that thinking. Yeah. 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 The incentives that the government gives are re really they're the biggest ones for, for a brand new properties. Yeah. Brand new houses, brand so new apartments. And it's cheaper too, though. But it's mm. cheaper. Yeah, the it's stamp cheaper. duty is massive. That's right. Massive yes, savings. Yes. 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 That's right. Yes. Yes. There's so, a, 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 
an investor wants to, an investment property and they build something <coughs> that brand new, so they obviously save on stamp. How much would they save on a four hundred thousand dollar property, right. roughly? Twenty five grand. Twenty thousand. Yes, yeah, yeah. certainly at least fifteen thousand yeah. dollars on a typical property, which is a chunk of money. That's right. And then when they come to most investors are, are the borrowing money for it, um, so there will be a, uh, a, a, a a shortfall. You know, the mm. interest on the loan is mm -hmm. most of the time is is more than the rent. Typically, you know, say the interest on a loan is say twenty thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. um, the rent may be fifteen thousand dollars. You know, it depends what you buy, what type of property you buy. Mm. There are properties that can rent up to you know, more than twenty thousand dollars a year, so mm. they can be what's called cash flow positive, positive. positive. right? Yeah. right? Yeah. But often, often with particularly most metropolitan properties, um, the the rent is not enough to cover the loan. Mm. So the tax deductions become critical. Um, if if uh, if the tax deductions are uh, are amounting to a hundred to two hundred dollars a week, and regularly they are two hundred dollars a week, that can make the difference in making an investment af affordable for a consumer to get into. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, mm. absolutely. So you could get in terms of tax deduction. Would I be right in saying that, say, for an, uh, an average home with say four hundred thousand brand new home, that would be uh, you know you'd get thirty five forty thousand dollars worth of deduction. Yeah, the deductions um, will be for the, all the interest on the loan, which yeah. would be probably twenty thousand yeah. dollars. Then there'll be the depreciation on the building, and that can be another ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Well, you're already right. at thirty thirty five. That's right. Yeah. So Plus the, the rest. That's sort of range yeah. you mean. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And you're yes. a lower tax bracket as well. Yeah. You're paying at a lower tax bracket. Yeah, as of well. course. Yeah. And the, the government yeah. also offers another incentive to uh, to wage earners, people that uh, are, you know on salary and wages, that uh, when you have an investment property and you're getting these uh, tax deductions, mm -hmm. you don't have to wait till the end of the year to get the tax refund. Yeah, of course. Right? Yes. yes. There's a special form the tax office offers oh, that's right. that yeah. uh, yeah. you can get the tax refund given to you in each, each you, you pay in yeah. advance of it. So that the, the government really is trying to encourage people to become landlords. Yeah. That's what they really are doing. But that, mm. that's like a gift. It, it's just a, an extra gift for an investor. So at mm. the end of the day, you could, we've got one minute left before we've got to go to a break, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you could, uh, you need to have borrowing capacity. And once you've got that borrowing capacity, you take out a loan, you purchase a property, it's really costing you nothing, or almost nothing. Or That's right. Or maybe it's making you money from That's day right. One. Your property yeah. selection is critical. Um, you know, the re rental returns, which is the amount of rent you're, you're getting back on the property, they vary quite a lot between mm. properties. So mm. selecting the right property is, is important. But you can, you can pick a property where the rent can be uh, more than the loan yeah. uh, or as yeah. close as you want, yeah. taking into account the tax deductions. Yes. Amazing, amazing. Okay, well look, we, we must go to a break, but we'll come back with more. <laughs> All right, you're watching the Mortgage Busters Show. You're with Shane Watson, myself, Greg, and Adrian. We'll see you directly after the break. Don't go away. Guys, don't forget to pick up the phone, give me a call, call 1300 TMB Show to organise your free financial thumbprint report. You can also go to www.tmbshow.com.au. Welcome back. You're watching the Mortgage Busters show. Shane, so negative gearing is positive. Absolutely, yes. It's positive towards uh, uh, getting people into the investment market, buying investment properties. That's what it's all about. And really, the gearing refers to the fact that you've got borrowings. Yeah, borrow. That's right. And yes. negative is just that it costs me a little bit more. My expenses are a little bit more than what my income is. Yes. Mainly the rent and the tax deductions. And leverage. Right. Or it's a little bit less than... Yes, yes. Mm. Because the deductions are negative, that's why they call it negative, negative gearing. gearing. Yes. But it's yes. positive. Yes. But it's po absolutely positive and it makes uh, buying investment properties affordable for consumers. Very good. Leverage. Excellent. Mm. Mm. Now, why is there this move or tree change or sea change or whatever you want to call it? Why are people retiring into country life? Okay, one of, one of the reasons they do is um, uh, people don't have enough uh, superannuation. And, now uh, that is a big truth. Yeah, yeah. There, look, there are people retiring now um, or around about now, so people that are sort of, you know, in their early 60s, and they haven't had the benefit of superannuation for very long. Mm, no way. So a lot baby of them, boomers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. baby boomers, um, and then small amounts, and uh, a lot of them still have a home loan. You know, some of them, they took out their home loan when they were, you know, 50, um, late in life, and they've still got a home loan. So, as an example, you can find you can find someone in an outer suburb might have a house worth four hundred thousand dollars, and they've still got a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage, and uh, they're about to retire, and their superannuation might be 
30,000. Yeah, I know. So I know. They, it's tragic. They see that they're in a bit of a pickle. Um, and one way out of it is uh, country properties. Uh, I've got a lot of people, particularly in the metropolitan area, they don't realise um, how cheap country properties are. So um, often I'll give advice to people that are in that situation there that they should think of selling the home when they retire. They sell the home, clear out the mortgage, so then they might have $200,000. They might have $100,000, but not enough to buy a, a home mm -hmm. in the metropolitan area. But you can look at the country areas um, and you can buy houses between a, you know, fifty and one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Fifty between fifty, <laughs> yeah, yeah, depending how far you need to go. Wow. So what I advise people is whatever you, whatever amount of money you've got, if it's fifty thousand dollars, then it's just a matter of going to the smaller country towns, where you can buy houses of fifty thousand dollars. One of the one of the advantages of 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 the of the, co the smaller country towns is that the um, the community life is much much better than than in the metropolitan area. In, in your street where you live now, I don't know how many people you know of your neighbours. None. You, none. You, maybe, <laughs> maybe none, that's right. And in the whole suburb, you might have you know, 10 people in the suburb. Yeah, none. I can guarantee you. <laughs> if you it's move, true. If it's you true. move to a little country none. town of a population of 100 or 200 people, you will know half of them within three months. Yeah, true. And you get fresh eggs left on your doorstep. <laughs> <no>? <laughs> yes. That's if you pay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, really? yes. And if, you, if, you, if you've got more money and you can afford to go to a regional area, you know, th the prices in the regional areas are, are higher. So, um, uh, you know, if you can afford the, the larger ones, more like, you know, so the, the sale, uh, Terrelgan, Bendigo, you know, outside of Bendigo, more like uh, Shepparton, Swan Hill, Mildura, those ones, house prices are higher. They're bigger cities mm -hmm. if you want to have more facilities. But the country lifestyle, um, particularly um, in the smaller towns, uh, the, the, the lifestyle and the prices are very attractive. Mm. O often what I will suggest to people, if I get a client who's got say $150,000 or whatever the figure is, I say, look, just get on one of the state highways and I say, look, just drive to Bendigo and then get on the colder highway from there to Mildura. This is just an example, but it applies to other highways as well. It could be the Princess Highway going all the way to Sale, um, uh, the South Gippsland Highway going down through Gippsland, any of them. Start, but say start from an outer area from Melbourne, so in case of Bendigo, and then just go through the little towns. As you go further along, the house prices get lower and lower and lower. So the house prices will start at, say, $120,000. Until you get to Alice Springs. <laughs> <laughs> you stop before Oyen, yeah, by yeah, the example yeah, there, right? <laughs> and, and, off there, and you can get houses there for $50,000. Where's Amazing. this? Oyen, Oyen, Oyen in the yeah, northwest, yeah. as Oyen. an example. Yeah. Oyen, the you're northwest. Not, you're not Owen Onion. and Oyen. Onion. <laughs> you're not Owen in there's Oyen. Lots, <laughs> there's lo lots of smaller country towns, the house prices are remarkably low. Mm. Uh, but you, and you're not losing <laughs> lifestyle. The actual lifestyle can be better than what you've got. So, Absolutely. So it's a good solution for people. That I've, most people, if, you, if you're in that situation and you worry what you're going to do when you retire... Uh, well, you have to live within your means. Live within so your means. that's so just what you've got to do. That's why I do yeah. it. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So let's, Amazing. let's go to another um, situation. What about inner city properties? A complete, total... Yeah, it's the opposite. It's opposite. Yes, that's why, right. Why are they... Why, yeah, why is there poor rent? In inner city. Ah, okay. With it affects your cash flow. Yes, that's right. Yes. With, with properties, um, uh, you've got um, demand for properties to, to buy them, and then you've got demand for renters to rent. And they're different, different markets, and there's different numbers of people with each area. Now, um, the uh, people looking to buy lifestyle, which is the buyers, um, in a city, they will pay a higher price. They'll pay a higher price. So, in a city, for lifestyle. But renters, they won't keep up with it. They won't. They won't pay the, the same rents as they would uh, as, a, as a percentage of what they would in the outer area. So, rent return is a figure that's used in the industry, which is the total rent for a property divided by its value. And typically, um, in outer suburbs, you can expect somewhere around uh, four and a half percent rent return. Okay. Um, as you get further in towards the inner city, it drops down to under four and then closer to three percent. So the more expensive the properties, generally the rent return is lower. Wow. And that so becomes you're actually, sorry. you're better off to rent the property that you want, the more expensive property, because you're actually, in terms of value, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck mm -hmm. as a yes. renter. Yes. And as an investor, get the four and a half, five percent returners. Yes, that's yeah. right. Does yes. it make sense? Absolutely, yeah. that's right. Absolutely, yes. When you come to, to buying a property as an investor, rent return is king. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so you, look, you should be looking for rent return. That's why 
in a suburban um, or in a city uh, apartments are not good uh, for investment from a, a rent return point of view. Correct. So if you're if you're going to be borrowing money, um, it's hard to get enough rent. We well, won't. You just won't get enough rent to cover the loan. Correct. There's going to be a shortfall. If you buy properties further out in the edges of Melbourne or in regional areas, the rent return is much higher. And regional areas are going through it. Re Region leaders absolutely are. Yes. Shane, I've yes. got to cut you off. I'm sorry to do okay, this too, but we've just run out of time. Okay. But great <laughs> to have you on. We'll have you on again. Thank yep. you. Yep. Shane is he's actually becoming part of our team at the Mortgage Busters. He's going to be one of our associates on a that's longer right. term basis. Yes, so welcome, Shane. Welcome. You've been watching the Mortgage Busters show. We'll be back. Don't go away. Come straight back to us after the break. We'll be with Steve Hudson, our finance guru. guru. So we'll see you after the break. Guys, don't forget to pick up the phone, give me a call, call 1300 TMB Show to organise your free financial thumbprint report. You can also go to www.tmbshow.com.au. Welcome back to the Mortgage Busters Show. Adrian, wasn't Shane very good? Interesting stuff. Very interesting. Especially the overseas opportunities that exist. Yeah, and it's been around for a while, but I don't think a lot of people even look for it. No, they don't. They don't. There, there's enough opportunity in Australia, but you, you can look globally for Everywhere. opportunity as well, which is fantastic. <laughs> anyway, we've got Stephen Hudson, who is our finance, uh, of course. And <laughs> welcome back to the show, Steve. How are you? Gentlemen, how are we? Good, good. Very good. That's good. I see the most still there. Yeah, most still there. We've had a few comments and uh, one of your cheeky comments from previous show, Greg, about having a transplant at the top. Yeah, been, I see a bit of fuzz there. What's going on? It's been quite, uh, <laughs> uh, our viewers have been quite vocal about that. So uh, anyway, it's a call out for men's health and uh, from November, although it's November's gone by now, but uh, over 40, 50 years of age, you should be having those those blood tests. Keep your health. Maybe I'll try and grow one for next year. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. For yeah. Start now. Don't, worry, don't worry about the blood tests. Just grow <laughs> the blood tests. Just grow <laughs> them up. That's it. Yeah. Steve, what do you got for us today? Well, today, just uh, to the viewers, we're still talking about the thumbprint report. We will always be talking always. about the thumbprint report because still it works. Always, it does. And we've had uh, a good feedback on that. And, Absolutely. You know, for the viewers, just to. You know, give them an idea of where they are from a financial position. So we take all that information and put it into this report. And if you want your report done for your personal situation, Adrian, where do they go? tmbshow.com.au yeah. uh, or, <laughs> or phone? 1300 TMB Show. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> now, the, benefit of, the real benefit of this is that anyone that gets it done... It'll put all their numbers in the one place, but it will give them options. It'll give them the next steps they need to take to, to get closer or to achieve financial freedom. Well, that's what we want. What was the what we were talking about a couple of weeks back? The train to yes, the train to <laughs> wealthy town. Wealthy town. Yeah. Wealthy town. The train called someday leads to a town called nowhere. But the GO train leads to, to wealthy, wealthy town. Wealthy <laughs> town. And that's, that's where we want to be. Yeah? Righty ho, get us to wealthy okay, town. Okay, wealthy town. So coming back to the thumb, thumbprint report, it puts you in a position what you can do and what you can't do. We will work with you then to put a plan together for you to where you can get to on, the, on that regard. So investment will show you how you can pay off your house in a shorter period of time by investing. And this is the way it looks. Whiteboard time, people. Whiteboard moment. Yeah, so here we go. Um, principal place of residence. Let's say this is worth uh, you know, four, 450. We had a mortgage there and it was worth, say, 600. Um, that's what we call the estimated market value. And that's the loan, which was three years ago. And if you applied crunching, uh, chunking to it, we paid off 150. We've now. Sorry, can, can we get you to where you stand up? Yeah. yeah. What, we, what went wrong? You <coughs> or me? No, I think it was technical. So this thing keeps sliding. They don't fix it, though. They just keep leaving it. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. All right, so we'll get it from you standing up. Sorry about that. That's all right. So looking at the whiteboard here, we'll just have a look at um, how, how you can pay off your house in a period of around about seven to 10 years. 
earlier, depending how you, you do it. Let's say this is worth $600,000, K for thousands, Greg. That's right. And if we go back to one of our other um, episodes, we had a situation where we had a loan for four fifty, and over three years, someone paid that off down to $300,000, okay? That's fantastic. So that's a situation. <laughs> so we've got 600 minus the 300, so we've got a $300,000 equity, okay? In, in, that, in that scenario. So what banks look for what, when we say pay off in six or seven years is that we can actually buy another property based on that information that we've got there, okay? So if we bought another investment property, which was say $400,000, we don't have to put a cent into that. We can use the equity. We can do it two ways. We can call what they call cross collateralization which you just use the equity in this property here and you raise the money plus funds to complete, which is you know for stamp duties and so forth. So there's not one cent that you have to put into it. It's a good country, Australia. Oh, it's a great country. It allows you to do this and also you get some tax benefits on that way down the, the, the track. The other way is doing it is that the banks always look for, at this current climate, is you know an 80% loan against 20% equity before you go into loan mortgage insurance, which we've spoken about before, which in this scenario, what we're doing there is raising the 20% deposit, which would be 80K in this situation on a property that's an investment of $400,000, and effectively we're taking a loan of 320, okay, on that property. So they're the two main options that you've got in raising funds for an investment property. And in Australia, property doubles every approximately seven to 10 years, would that be right? Uh, yes, 7.2 years. So if, if, you, if you take the journey of seven to 10 years, this is going to be worth $800,000. So along the way, you're going to be making 400,000. And that there gives you the opportunity, if you come to it, to, to pay off that. Obviously, there's some tax implications with that, with capital gains and so forth. So you'd always be working with, through a tax account to make sure that, that you've got the right advice on taxation. But that's the principle that when you hear people preaching that you can pay off in six or seven mm. years time, mm. it's using the and leveraging off property rising and having an investment property that doubles and then it gives you an opportunity. The other opportunity, of course, is that you go ahead and buy another property. Correct. And another one yeah, and correct. another one. Correct. So they're the two, two types of structures for finance. The only problem with this is that you actually have to go and do it. Absolutely. You have to, if you, if you want to advance financially, you have to take action. And this is where people fall down. Absolutely. Is that they don't take the well, there's, steps. There's a, there's a great uh, speaker called Wilson Luna, and he talks about if you want to be an Olympic swimmer, you actually have to jump, into, got to the jump into the pool and get yes, wet. You've got so, to get wet. Yeah, so. See, this, you know. It's a fantastic formula and it's almost foolproof. I mean, you know, it just continues to perform. Property just continues to perform. We've got people dying, literally, to come into the country. We've got internal organic growth. We've got external demand. You know, we've got overseas interest buying up all our land. Mm. Property's only, as far as I can see, going one way and that's north. And the chunking has um, taken a lot off. Yeah, the chunking has just demolished that loan in the first place. So it can be done. All right. Thanks again, Steve. No worries. Thanks to Shane. Thanks to Adrian. We'll see you again on the Mortgage Busters show the same time next week. Have a great week.